Hey y'all, what's going on? Hello, hi, hi, hello, hi. Um, so I know y'all like, okay, wait, this is different. We're gonna talk about like business and accounting and tax stuff in the car. Yes, okay. Normally I would do this at my desk, but see what happened was I had got a nine to five, right? <laughs> in accounting, and now I have a corporate job with corporate money. And we'll talk about that in another video. If you are a subscriber, then you already know what the deal is, okay? You already know the business. But if you're not, welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like, comment, share, all that, all that. Um, I'm over here with the crooked afro, the dry hair, all that. Uh, three jackets because um, that's just what it is today. And we in for a long ride. So, let's get into it real quick. The new tax law. Everybody has been asking me about this new law that has passed starting January 1st, 2022. Regarding third-party payment processes like Memo, PayPal, Cash App, Square, all that. And this is what that law means and what's going to change. One, you should have an accountant because my clients don't have to worry about this because theirs are already taken care of. They already know what's up. That's why they have me, huh? That's why they have me. Y'all need me because with me, you wouldn't have to worry about this, would you? But, and you're actually really gonna need me after this. Um, <laughs> just saying. So originally, the original rule was if you use PayPal, Venmo, Square, Cash App, any type of Stripe, any type of online payment platform processor, which other than cash and checks, you do. Everything you do is usually done through those platforms. Before, and if, if y'all really pay attention to my Instagram or my social media, you will see that I said it was either last year or the year before, that if you make over $20,000, or process more than 250 transactions through any of these platforms, you get what's called a 1099K. Okay, a 1099K. You get that form. Now, a lot of people don't know that, so, okay, well, I'll come back to that part. You get that form, you can pull it up on your, like, PayPal, Venmo, Stripe, they have it in tax documents. So you can pull it up at any point in time. Now, granted, this is if you process more than $20,000 or more than 250 transactions, business transactions, so that means goods and services. Now, if you send your friends and family uh, money, that, that's not what I'm talking about. <clears throat> now, I don't use PayPal as much as I used to, but I know there is an option where you can do either friends and family or goods and services. I'm going to get to that too, because <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all how what not to do. So... When you have these business accounts or when you're processing through these platforms, instead of the IRS saying, you know what, we only going to give you a document if you do more than $20,000, they're now saying, we're going to treat you like an independent contractor, which uh, is a person who gets a 1099 miscellaneous, which is now 1099 NEC. I got to do a whole other video on that too, because that changed. But like, say for instance, let's use me as an example. My clients send me a 1099 because I'm a freelance accountant. I'm an independent contractor. So if they pay me over $600 in a year, I get a 1099 that I report on my tax return as business income. And they get a 1099 that they report on their tax return as accounting fees or paying out a freelance or uh, independent contractor. So now... The IRS, and I saw this coming from a mile away, because people were abusing it, and they know now. Like, they've been known, but now they're officially putting the rule in place where instead of $20,000, it's six hundred dollars now. Because they have realized, as time changes, more people accept money through these platforms for their businesses. Like, that's how we process money. Especially to my people who do hair, nails, lashes, those kind of things. Uh, people who have Square in their retail coffee shops, all that, stores, all that, <clears throat> they're aware of that now. So, they like, okay, 
if a person, because whether you make 20000 or not, and I tell my clients this all the time, what you do or don't do, a do file or don't file is on you. But legally, it don't matter how much money you make in your business through these platforms, you need to put it on your tax return. You need to file a business tax return. That is business income. But a lot of people, because it's like, oh, well, I didn't make the $20,000, or even if they didn't make what they feel is enough, they don't file it until it hits that requirement mark, which is the $20,000 mark or more than 250 transactions. So the IRS said, oh, okay, y'all wanna play with us? We gonna make it 600. So any business that makes more than $600, now you get the 1099K. So that's a big jump. I'm almost positive, if you're a business, if you're running a business, maybe if you in your second year, for sure you done made over $600 or will make over 600 in 2022. I promise you that. You gonna process more than $600 unless you're really just just now getting started and haven't really accepted any payments yet. It, it, it ain't much, don't take much to get to 600. So what that means is you process more than $600, the IRS gets from PayPal, Square, Cash App, whatever. It could be one of them or it could be all of them. Whichever one you process more than $600 on, the IRS get a copy of what's called a 1099K. You get a copy of what's called a 1099K. You need to file that 1099K on your tax return. Now you are officially liable for this money because if the IRS gets a 1099K from PayPal, saying, we'll just use me as an example, Miranda made um, $750 off PayPal in 2022. The IRS is going to get that form. So then the IRS is going to pull Miranda's uh, tax return and if they don't see that 1099K with that $750 on it that PayPal sent them, okay, now we got a problem. So now Miranda owes us some money because she's not filing this on her taxes. Why? Let's figure it out. So that is how that's gonna go. If you make over 600, you best believe the IRS gonna know about it. And you're gonna have to file now. So y'all need to be prepared. If you own a business, I'm telling you right now, mark my words, I don't know how many times I gotta say this. It'd be really making me mad because I don't know how many times I gotta say this. Please get a bookkeeper, okay? <laughs> like, my information is at, at the, at the, in the description. I, all over social media, Evans Financial Solutions. Please get a bookkeeper. <clears throat> Everybody think just because they process money on Cash App, just because they taking payments and all that on PayPal, that they don't need a bookkeeper. Yes, you do. Now you really need one because you know how easy it is to make $600? So when the end of the year come, how exactly do you think you're going to file your taxes? How are you keeping track with your expenses? Do you know how much you're making? Like, so when PayPal send that statement and they say $15,000 on it, do you know what to write off? Do you know how much money you spent in advertising? Do you know how much money you spent in supplies? Are you going to be able to fill out that Schedule C that belongs on your tax return now because now you received the 1099K? My point exactly. You need an accountant. Period. That's how it is to it. If you're going to be a, a legit business owner and entrepreneur, you need an accountant. Bookkeeper, accountant, whatever you want to call it, same thing. It's it, it don't do it. This right here, you really need one. Cause before people could get away with not filing shit stuff. Sorry, I'm trying not to cuss this video. People could get away with not filing stuff because they weren't making a certain caliber of money. So it's like, all right, the IRS don't know about it, so I don't really technically have to file it. Well, now you do. Unless you're going to be taking full cash for everything, and that's still illegal. Because eventually, if they haven't already, now they finna start going into the banks. It's finna get real, y'all. Y'all better watch out. The IRS knew, the, the government knew, because y'all see it say, in, in, uh, it has to do with the American Rescue, American Rescue Plan, right? When they started that PPP loan stuff and that SBA loan stuff, they was setting y'all up. They knew what was going to come from that. Because it's like, oh, so all these people got businesses? Oh, well, we're going to make them report it. Let's change the rules and make it 600 and not 20,000. Do y'all know how big of a gap that is? Y'all thought... <laughs> no. 
<laughs> sorry so um if you're a business owner and you're using those platforms just know that if you make over six hundred dollars you're going to get that 1099k uh, january 31st 2023 now for this tax season i'm gonna say you good but you really not because like i said in the beginning even if you don't make a certain amount i don't care if you at a loss i have a client who is at a loss with her business i told her to still file it file your business regardless if you're gonna be a business owner you got to record it whether it's a loss or whether it's a profit you still need to put it on your tax return. Stop trying to find ways around it. Don't nobody want to pay taxes. Well, I don't want to pay them. You don't want to pay them. Don't nobody want to pay them. I hate paying taxes, and I have to every year because I'm a business owner. My refund day has been gone. So be responsible because now you don't have a choice anymore. It's not $20,000 no more. Now it's six hundred. dollars So that's what that new law means. Now... A lot of people are going to try to do this because I know y'all, okay? I know us. Y'all are going to try to use the friends and family feature to make it not look like business income. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Do, do, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's be clear. Cash App, you can do stocks and trading and stuff on Cash App now. You're going to get a tax form for that regardless. Of, again, a whole nother video. Cash App is owned by Square, right? So, in Square processing, you can only use if you have a business. The only one where it's like you can go either way is Venmo and PayPal. If you sign up for Stripe, Square, all that, again, Cash App is owned by Square. Um, that's automatic commerce. That's commerce income. Those are what businesses use to process payments. But PayPal and Venmo, people have a little leeway because they can say, oh, this was a gift. Oh, this was just me giving my cousin money or giving my friend money or whatever. How long How, how long y'all think that's going to work? Exactly how much money do you think you can push through from forgiving your cousin money? Don't do that. Don't tell your clients, hey, send it to me as friends and family. Because another thing, what happens when you do that, if you, especially if you sell goods, then you risk um, losing your protection. So on PayPal, you know you have payment protection. So if you're paying for goods and services, then you can, you're protected. If something happens, you get your money back. But you send, let's say you, I'm selling something or got some products and stuff I'm selling and you send me $50 on PayPal or whatever and I say hey send it you know like you giving it to me like friends and family don't do not do goods and services but then you get your product from me and it's damaged PayPal can't protect you cause according to PayPal you just gave me $50 as a gift so they can't do nothing for you don't do that and even still you pull that move and you make too much money, you are going to be screwed. I have watched it happen. I had one person, they were, I want to say maybe five years behind on tax returns. They had a business. And at, at one point was telling people to send the money that way. Still got caught. Because you processing over thirty, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Nah, bruh. Don't nobody love you like that. <laughs> Don't nobody love you like that. And the IRS is watching. PayPal is reporting your ass. Uh-uh, this don't look right. They got $20,000 over the course of a year. If somebody wanted to give you that much money, come on now. Y'all got to be logical. People always find a way to cheat the system. And people are still going to find a way to cheat the system. But I'm telling you right now, do not come crying to me like some people have when you get stuck with that IRS letter because you didn't file your taxes or you didn't file them correctly. With this new law in place, they ain't playing no games with y'all at all. No games. So I suggest right now you get with an accountant you can get with a tax repair. Now, damn, that's a whole nother video. Yeah, this is going to have to be a series. You can get with a tax repair, but that's only going to help you with the tax part. 
And that's not going to help you for next year. That's only going to help you with this year. Because it's the difference between an accountant and a tax preparer. Two totally different things. Tax preparers, they prepare taxes. Accountants, they do the whole thing. They do taxes, they do accounting, bookkeeping, journal entries, income statements, financial statements, all that. Now, you do have tax preparers who are accountants, like me. I'm both. So, there are some tax preparers and financial companies out there who their focus is tax, but they can also do accounting. Doesn't matter. Forget them. Just come to Evans Financial Solutions because we do it all. <laughs> like, we do it all. I, I got you. Just go ahead and book that consultation so I can get you straight. It's still the beginning of the year. You still have time to get a bookkeeper. You still have time to get an account. Shopify, too. Don't. That's another uh, online platform that people get money from. Amazon, royalties, all that. Everything that you are doing online, that you are receiving money from online. If it's not cash or a check, they know. They know now. They will know at some point. That's your fault. You shouldn't have did that. But that's what that means. I hope that made sense. But what you, only thing you need to know is if you make this, and this is for business owners because a lot of people are concerned. It's like, but I see, I really do send money on Cash App. If you send money on Cash App for real, like, and you're not a business owner, this don't apply to you. This apply to people who actually selling goods and services on Cash App and using these online platforms. You are going to get a 1099K at the end of the year. You're going to get it. $20,000 was the threshold. That's a high threshold. So a lot of people, over 30 million people or businesses got away with that. Like, that's what made the IRS say we need to lower this threshold because people are not reporting their income. It's no way that we have all these businesses out here and we're not seeing that on no tax return. It's no way. They figured that out. So expect to get that 1099K. And if you don't put that 1099K on your tax return, expect to get a letter from the IRS. So... <clears throat> That's all that is. It's not a new law. It's an updated law. It's People are calling it a new law. And I say new law just because it's easier for people to understand. Because a lot of people didn't know that the old law even existed. Because people don't pay attention and ask for help. But it is an updated law. It's not a new law. 1099Ks have existed for years. It's just the only difference is instead of $20,000 or more than 250 transactions, it's now $600, which is easy money. Easy money. The part you need to work on is how you going to write that off. What kind of what, what your expenses? What you going to do about your expenses? How you going to write that off? How you going to make sure that that you have an actual profit that you paying on the profit and not on the revenue. You're not, you don't pay taxes on what you bring in, which is the revenue. That's just the monies that's coming in. You don't, you don't pay taxes on that. You pay taxes on your profit, which means you got to take your expenses out. That's where an accountant comes into play because you're not doing it right. I promise you ain't doing it right. If you, if you're not an accountant or have any type of financial background, you're not doing it right. And you make sure you want to do it right. Because if you mess around and don't, either you're going to pay too much in taxes or not enough. So that's what that change is. And a lot a lot of people come asking me about it. So I was like, let me just do a YouTube video so I can stop texting and typing the same thing over and over. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the link. I'm like, here, watch this. And then that's all you need to know. <laughs> like, that's all you need to know. If you have questions about it, Make sure you put them in the comments. Put them in the comments, okay? If you don't put them in the comments, I ain't gonna see it. If it's on social media somewhere, I might miss it. So just in case, we don't wanna, I don't want you to, you know, I don't want your question to get missed. So put it in the comments so that I can answer you directly. And depending on what the question is, will determine if I just answer it in the comments or just do a whole video about it. I'm gonna do more videos because there's also other tax rules and accounting rules that people need to know, okay? 
So, again, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate y'all for riding with me through that traffic. Like I said, normally I do these at my desk, but uh, life been life. And when I get home from tutoring, which is where I'm going to now, I got to do accounting work. Oh, that was a dramatic pause. I, I was waiting for y'all to get it. I got to do accounting work because I got clients that need their books done, their taxes done, and everything else. And I also just do taxes, too. But now, I don't do personal taxes. I do not do personal taxes at all. I only do business taxes. Or if you're an LLC, personal and business go on one return. That's another video. I'm going to have to make notes when I go back and watch this because I didn't say that's another video at least five times by now. I don't even know what the video going to be about. But <laughs> anyway, y'all let me know if y'all have any questions. I hope that helped a little bit. Uh, it kind of made it a little bit more clear. Took some anxiety off some people's chest. Made people a little more nervous. But ultimately made you more understanding and conscious and smart enough to know that you really need to get an accountant like even if i wasn't an accountant i'd tell you to get one i don't at this point yes 100 percent yes i want it to be me but for the sake of your business just get one <laughs> like just get one for the sake of your business just get one save yourself do it now before it's too late and you lose everything and i'm telling you that as an entrepreneur and as a, a motivator and a real person okay so i will see y'all in the next video make sure you like comment and subscribe share post this because people need to know about it uh, my facebook people know it's coming and i will see y'all in the next video love y'all bye